My name is Lindsay Lanneman, and effectively, I can be most easily represented by the clammy forest trunicates. I understand that Latin is not a widely recognizable language, and it seems like jargon, but it kind of adds to the meaning. Another name for the clammy forest trunicates is the pink fairy armadillo. The pink fairy armadillo is a funny little creature with some abnormal characteristics. It's the smallest known species of the armadillo, and it only resides in a small part of South in of South Africa and Argentina. Pink fairy armadillos have silky yellowish fur on their underbelly and a flexible dorsal shell attached to the top in order to provide shelter and safety just like that of its cousin, the armadillo. They're solitary creatures and they're primarily nocturnal, but they're believed to be polyamorous and have only one child in their lifetime. They're quite mysterious little guys, but there also really isn't a whole bunch of research about them. I've never really quite fit in. I wouldn't say that I've always been alone, but I've never been in a spot in my life where I was like, yeah, this seems right. I'm short and stocky in nature, and I haven't always fit into a specific group. Growing up, I wasn't ever really the girl that played with makeup or my mom's high heels. Instead, I was more into being first picked at kickball for recess. In third grade, for some activity in class, my teacher asked us to divide boys and girls in on sides of the room. Naturally, I kind of just floated over to the boys' side because that's where my friends were and that's where I felt like I belonged. My teacher, Mr. Hazelton, asked me to meet him out in the hallway and we talked and he said, you know, you have to go to the girls' side, right? And eight-year-old Lindsay simply replied with, no, it's okay. I'm 70% boy anyway. Looking back on it 12 years later, it makes me giggle, but at the time I was genuinely confused. I knew I was a girl, but I just didn't feel like I felt like fit in to the feminine stereotype. My female friends bought cheap makeup at Claire's and I still wore basketball shorts religiously. This little trend didn't change until I started going through puberty in middle school. I was becoming more interested in some of these girly things, but when I started exploring it, I realized I didn't fit into my old friend group anymore. I wasn't one of the guys, but I also wasn't one of the girls. In September of 2011, I was in sixth grade. My parents told me that me and my siblings, we were going to move halfway across the country to Kansas. 13, year old, 13 years old is a hard age to uproot, but it was especially difficult for me because of the little mini gender crisis I found myself in. At my new school, I tried my best to establish myself as a typical girl, but it was glaringly obvious that I had no idea what I was doing. My whole life, I'd kind of dipped in between gender roles and expectations, and all of a sudden, I had to figure out how to fit into one subgroup. On my first day, my new school matched me up with my very own mentor, a guaranteed friend. My mentor's name was Lindsay, just like mine, and I sat with her and her friends at lunch. I knew I didn't fit in as soon as I sat down. They all wore, they all had skinny jeans and designer clothes, and they talked about boys, and I just had a little tummy bulge out of my favorite Air Apostle shirt and messy brown hair, and it just indicated that I didn't belong. Within the week, they asked me to find somewhere else to sit, and I overheard them telling rumors about me being lesbian. I eventually found my own at this new school, though. I became involved in band and theater, and I would even say that I made friends. It didn't really last long, and as I emerged into high school, I found myself a little more lost. It seemed that everyone had, like, friend groups, and I just kind of kept to myself. Now, at the age of 20, I realized that all of these events I used to recall as awkward and painful, I now see as aspects of who I am and how I've grown into my own identity. I still am, by no means, completely comfortable with myself. I don't fit into society's standards of the conventionally beautiful woman, and sometimes I find that I say stuff that's a little too gross for the public, and then I also realize that I don't really care. Within the past year, I've become comfortable in my sexuality, and I've even been able to accept that I'm bisexual. I'm loved greatly by my boyfriend, who doesn't feel the need to fit me into any sort of box, and he cares for me and loves for me for who I am. So yeah. I'm a little out there and I don't always belong, but just because I don't fit societal standards of beauty and femininity doesn't make me any less of a valid person.
The pink fairy armadillo is a funny little creature, and it doesn't really belong either. But I suppose that that's what makes us unique. In all honesty, I don't really mind all that much, because I know who I am, and anyone else's opinion doesn't really matter all that much.